Hey guys, what's up? It's Sean, Autotopia LA. We're back with my friend Tommy Dreezy. We're digging into a one in the world car. This is a 1970 Camaro, but not just a Camaro. This is a Chaparral racing Chevy factory. Like this is the real deal yeah. from 1970 Trans Am racing, correct? Yes. Holy shit, dude. For one, just the sound alone, like you know it's a real race car. It's not a, it's not a like a street car that's kind of loud. This is a full-blown straight piped car. I'm sure you know a lot about this car. I know a little bit about I'm 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 more of a driver than I am a historian or a, a mechanic. That's why mechanics are my heroes. This is a pretty special car. It's uh, they built two for the factory and then a third one was built that's still around for a privateer. The, the, the other one got uh, you know, destroyed probably in racing, but this was the last car that Jim Hall raced professionally. Oh really? And he actually raced this yes, car? Yes, he actually raced this car and so did Ed Leslie and a few other drivers. Wow. And Ed Leslie actually won the uh, Watkins Glen Trans Am race in this car. Yeah. This is an original Trans Am car from 1970. It's just been restored, but it is exactly the way it ran. I'll run this with the historic Trans Am group. There's 30, 40 cars in that group, all original cars to the spec wow. of how they ran back in the day. What's the motor? Is it a 350? It's a 302. Yeah. Uh, single carburetor, four barrel, but it's got to be somewhere around 490 to 525. Okay. okay. It's, a, it's, it's, it's a lot of horsepower. Yeah, I believe it. Check this one out, you guys. They, we were talking about this before we got started shooting, is the hood looks like it doesn't fit properly, right? The gapping and stuff. But this is intentional that there's a slight lift to the hood for airflow. Yeah, so what they did, so I think what the factory, you know, these came with a cowl hood, so right. you could have forced air going into it. And I, I, I'm assuming the factory just wanted a regular hood on it because the, the folks could relate more to that car that they could go buy. So it was still about selling cars. Right. It was race on race Sunday, on sell Sunday, cars on Monday. Sell on Monday. So yeah. what they did was they devised a, a, a situation here to the, so the airflow could still go inside the car go down into the carburetor, make some more horsepower. Yep. But the other one that really, really stands I know, out to I me know. is, the, the, clear is the clear plexiglass yeah. splitter up front here, right. where on a Trans Am car, I guess I would expect to see a big chunk of metal yep. coming yep. down. Yep. Do you know why it was plexi? Uh, I, I can't remember the company's name that created this plexi, but they were sponsored. And so what they did, they were sponsored by the company who made this plexiglass. So they said, why don't we build a plexiglass? Got it. Spoiler. Got it. Can we pop the hood to sure. look while we're here? That's a pretty cool little beast right there. Gosh, man. That, 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 this, this 302 engine was just an amazing engine for the pony cars. I think up until the mid 2000s, they were still using this small block engine for the current uh, Trans Am. Yeah. So I assume that it's manual brakes or is that a booster? It's a booster, but for me, this is the way the car came and it's, I guess, the way it ran. Yeah. Uh, for me, I prefer, so exactly. I prefer, I prefer more of a hard pedal. Yeah. So, um, but you know, we try to work with it as best as possible, but it is a, it, it is a power assist and yeah. it's also power assist steering. Ah. I drove uh, Dick Gold, I used to have Dick Goldstrand's 67 uh, Camaro and okay. race that in Trans Am in vintage racing yeah. to have some fun. Yeah. And that was a lot of work. Was so, it? so these things got a little easier to drive, yeah. but still very, you know, still have to be on it 10 tenths to make these things work right. Sure. But boy, did that help a little bit, I'm sure, for some of the longer distance races. Seeing it flared like it is, and they probably, my guess is they just roll it. It's obviously, it's not added on, right? Yeah. They yeah. just roll that out. And are, now are these still, are these bias ply tires as well? These these are what they call blue streaks. Okay. So they're like a they're, they're a slick. Now this was shocking to me was seeing that there's actually glass in the door. Yeah. Again, they wanted the car to simulate a street car. A street car. So mm -hmm. you have to have rolling windows up. Obviously, you race with it down. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes we'd have a window net for safety. Mm -hmm. But uh, well, this is uh, like you said earlier, race on Sunday, sell on Monday. Yeah. It's just, God, I swear, there's so much history here. I mean, seeing that name, oh, yeah. you know, is so important. Seeing the gurney for president, <laughs> I, I, I mean, 
it was nuts hearing you guys you start this car up. I mean, the the side exit, oh, obviously yeah. it's straight pipe. There's oh, yeah. no muffler or anything. Yeah. It is, and it looks like it's got to be three inch piping. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. It's so loud. It's crazy how wide it is. Yeah, Watching I, this come I think off. These, I, I think this flare is a little bit more than the original. Ah, uh, yeah, you think? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, looking at it from the rear, you know, it's it's it really is, it really is massive back yeah. here. When I when I saw Rex pop open the trailer, yeah. I mean, you saw us all like little kids just kind of gravitating towards it, like it was candy or something. Yeah, I'm not sure, but I think that this uh, rear spoiler was the uh, the beginning. I know that the 69 Camaro had a spoiler on it. Sure. And I think that they, they, this was the next iteration. Obviously, this is the, the next gen, yeah. 1970. So yeah. there's still a lot of little bits on here that even the factory was doing. What is this? Is it's this an overflow for the fuel. OK. So if you just, you know, a little bit too much fuel in there when you start the race, it'll it'll. Then overflow. it's just going to come puking out. It comes puking out. <laughs> Spit it out to the guy behind you. I love it, man. And hopefully everyone's behind you. Right? Exactly. <laughs> I, well, I like Jim Hall's thing about the, the one that had the secondary motor on it that created vacuum to suck the car to the ground. Oh, yeah, yeah. And he said that all the other drivers were complaining about how it would just throw debris at them. <laughs> and he said, well, just pass me then. Oh, that's great. <laughs> as long as it didn't throw a manhole cover. At yeah, them. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one, you guys, obviously, we can't do our normal thing where we go for a nice, cool drive, why? you know? No, really, why? <laughs> well, we can do a little bit in the neighborhood here. Look, here's why. I don't want we'll, him getting we'll get arrested. We'll get back to you on Yeah, on maybe, this. okay, maybe I should just shut up let's now. Go see, let's go see what's out there. All right, we're gonna go for a drive, you guys. <laughs>
right, you guys. Well, that is it for our shoot of this completely bonkers car. I can't believe we just drove that on the street. I can't believe Tommy did what he did in this thing. But what a joy, right? I mean, this is a true piece of American motorsports history right here. This is the last car Jim Hall raced. This is a Chaparral built for factory Chevrolet Camaro. Just completely blown away right now that we had the opportunity to shoot this car. I hope you guys had half as much fun in this episode as I did, because you gotta know I had a blast. As always, thanks for hanging and watching and supporting what we do. I really do appreciate it. And I will see you in the next episode. All right, man, later.